Hi everyone, thanks for joining us on our Tuesday TNT and uh, this first story is certainly going to dominate the bar talk today. Let's go straight to it. And Thai PBS World reporting that Thailand agrees to extend visa-free stay for Russian tourists to 90 days. The Thai cabinets decided to extend the visa-free stay in Thailand for Russian tourists from 30 to 90 days to boost tourism. This was announced by the Prime Minister yesterday before he set off to China. He explained that the winter in Russia usually begins in December, lasts until March, during which the weather is very cold and Russian people want to travel abroad to escape the extreme cold and a one-month stay abroad, such as in Thailand, may not be enough. Hence, the cabinets decided to extend the visa-free period of stay. Well, if that's the Prime Minister's reasoning, uh, that's okay. But of course, there's plenty of other countries in the Northern Hemisphere that get cold at the same time. And down the bottom, previously, Thailand granted visa exemptions to tourists from China and Kazakhstan from September the 25th to February the 29th next year. Now, Russian citizens have had the visa waiver for a long time already. Uh, The Chinese and Kazakh visitors now offered the same accommodation until February the 29th next year. Let's see if we can find out a bit more about this story. We go to BangkokPost.com. Government to allow Russians to stay up to 90 days without visas. And 923,000 Russians visited Thailand in the year to August, ranked fifth behind visitors from Malaysia, China, South Korea and India, according to data from the Tourism and Sports Ministry. And some 1.5 million Russians travelled to Thailand in pre-pandemic 2019, and they spent around 3.3 billion US dollars, making them the third largest spenders, according to official data. But there's a few more details we need to understand about this extension of the visa waiver for Russian people. And NationThailand.com says Thailand extends visa-free stays for Russians to 90 days. And this is an important detail. Visa-free entry for Russian tourists has been extended from 30 to 90 days starting on November the 1st. And it lasts until April the 30th next year. So there is a sunset on this edict, according to nationthailand.com. Let's have a look at a bit of the reaction. We go to the bangkokpost.com, and the story says that the Russian visa deal gets mixed reception. And uh, we scroll down, we find out that tourism operators have shared different views on Cabinet's extension on the length of stay for Russian tourists, as some are concerned about possible influx of illegal workers, while those in the South believe the policy will generate an uptick in spending. The Thai Prime Minister, Seta Tawi Sin, says he plans to hold discussions with the Russian President Vladimir Putin about other areas of cooperation in the future. More about that in just a moment. And the former President of the Chombury Tourism Council and Group Executive Director of Sunshine Hotels and Resorts says the extension might attract more Russians who intend to work illegally in Thailand, which would affect local people who are looking for jobs such as tour guides and drivers. And he says foreign companies would also exploit this policy more easily by using nominees or by hiring their own imported members of staff. Well, to be clear, that's already happened before, and certainly now. In a place like Phuket, a lot of uh, Russian shop fronts now popping up. And earlier this year, back in December and January, there was a lot of Russian people arriving. A huge influx on the island of Phuket. At the time, it was around about 70 to 90,000 Russian citizens arriving each month. Of course, most of them going home, but many of them coming to stay to escape the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. And uh, they're setting up home. They're buying frying pans and mattresses. And uh, they're settling in as long-term expats. Some of them also setting up businesses. A bit a bit further down, tourism operators in Kosamui and Phuket believe they can reap benefits from Russians staying in the country for longer. And the president of the Tourism Association of Kosamui says as a lot of long-stay tourists and remote workers from Russia have resided in Kosamui and Kopangan, the extension will help attract this segment and benefit the overall economy. And then he said there might be some Russians who are involved with crime, such as by operating tour businesses or opening companies with Thai nominees, but those businesses are not large ones, while most tourists still require products and services from local people. 
More importantly, what do you think about this? A visa waiver, Russian people singled out and their visa waiver extended from 30 to 90 days. I think it leaves a bad taste in the mouth for other countries that have been supporting Thailand for a long time. There was some talk a few months ago about visa waivers being extended from perhaps 30 to 45, 60, even 90 days. Uh, We only had the Chinese and the Kazakh people offered the visa waiver for 30 days uh, as a result of all those chats. But here we are, Russian people singled out. I don't think that's going to go down well with a lot of other tourists. It's the Tuesday TNT. Thank you very much for tuning in and uh, please subscribe to the channel and support us as much as you can. Now, speaking of tourists, uh, the Prime Minister hasn't been spending a lot of time in Thailand. He was here yesterday, but he's already off to China. Let's see what's going on. Kalsod English reporting on their Facebook page. The Prime Minister Seita Tawisin and his staff arrived in Beijing International Airport yesterday with a whole bevy of Chinese officials to greet them. The Thai PM will attend the third Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation at the invitation of Xi Jinping, the President of the People's Republic of China. And some video footage of the Thai Prime Minister arriving in a Thai Airways jet, being greeted by a little girl, and of course all the Chinese dignitaries. And the Prime Minister's very busy during his visit to China, and he's talking up business with Tesla. How's he doing that? Nation Thailand reporting that the PM revs up to woo Tesla by driving to work in wife's Model Y. This was much covered by Thai media yesterday when he turned up at the cabinet meeting in a white Tesla. The Prime Minister borrowed his wife's fully electric mid-sized Tesla Model Y in a gesture he hopes will lure the American automaker into investing in Thailand. He was first spotted getting out of the white car at the Royal Thai Police Headquarters on Monday morning before he headed off to Government House to preside over the weekly cabinet meeting. And it says Seta later told press that he'd borrowed his wife's car because he wants to win Tesla's heart. Apart from being emission free, he said the Tesla Model Y was also easy to get in and out of when compared to the Mercedes-Benz S-Class he'd been allocated as a prime minister. Apart from a bit of a whack to the Mercedes brand, I would have thought that they would have allocated him a Thai-built car. There's many very nice cars being built in Thailand these days. Uh, The Mercedes-Benz S-Class, I don't think, is one of them. And the government is planning to promote Thailand as an EV hub in Southeast Asia. And he said that the topic will be part of the agenda during his trip to Beijing. So all sorts of people he'll be meeting up in Beijing during his visit. This is one of them, reported by ThaiPBSWorld.com. The Thai PM will meet with Putin in Beijing tomorrow. The Prime Minister Seita Tawisin will hold a sideline meeting with the Russian President Vladimir Putin during his visit to Beijing. He said that he's got a scheduled meeting with the Russian leader. This follows the cabinet decision yesterday to extend the visa-free period for Russian tourists from 30 to 90 days to promote tourism. An informed source told Thai PBS World that the Prime Minister will meet Putin on Wednesday afternoon after he attends the opening ceremony of the Belt and Road Forum. And on Thursday, before he leaves Beijing, he'll also meet with the Chinese President Xi Jinping. And it will be the first such meeting for both leaders, and they're among dozens of leaders who are participating in the third Belt and Road Initiative Cooperation Forum being held in Beijing. And a bit further down there, Thailand is among only a few countries with visa-free agreement with Russia. Well, that's a bit of an odd statement, given that there are 68 nationalities that can enter Thailand visa-free, Russians included. Maybe they're meant to be saying a reciprocal arrangement. Anyway, that uh, statement not correct on ThaiPBSWorld.com. We go now to Bangkok Post, and a 20 baht flat fare starts on red and purple train lines. Now, this is a big change to public transport in uh, in Thailand. I was up in Bangkok just a week or so ago, and to travel just from one station to the next or a couple of stations could cost up to 17 or 20 baht just for two stops. 
And this story says the Cabinet yesterday approved the 20 baht flat fare on Bangkok's red and purple train lines, and that's effective immediately. And the new Transport Minister says the 20 baht ticket rate was officially launched at 11am yesterday at the Krung Tep Apiwat Central Terminal, that's the new terminal up there in the Chattachak area, and commuters changing between the red and purple lines at Bang Su still have to pay the flat fare twice. And currently, fares on the purple line range from 14 to 42 baht and the red line from 12 to 42 baht. And the 41 km SRT red line has 13 stations connecting Taling Chan and Rang Sit, while the 23 km MRT purple line has 16 stations running between Bang Su and the Klong Bang Pai. Now this could be a really big saving for regular commuters, and that of course is the idea. But I note that uh, some lines of the BTS and the MRT are already very busy, especially at peak hour times. Now these are new lines, and I think they're trying to uh, to get more people using them. But at some stage, I think uh, the cheap fares are going to fill up those lines very quickly. How much is this costing the government? Well, the Deputy Transport Minister says the government had to subsidise the 20 baht flat fare policy by 130 million baht annually. So already started on those two lines. Uh, Will it spread to other lines on the MRT and the BTS? And will it become a permanent fixture? We'll just have to wait. Thanks for joining us on our Tuesday TNT. Great to have you with us and an invitation to subscribe to the channel. We go to this next story reported by ASEANNOW.com and Felicia, 25 in a coma after accident on Samui, family struggling to bring her home. And Felicia Sedegrin, 25, is in a coma after a moped accident on the island of Koh Samui in Thailand. Now the family's gone there to try and get her home. It's really sad that I have to report these almost on a weekly basis. People having accidents on motorcycles here in Thailand and then all the ramifications of those incidents. And the mother says everything is terrible. It's so difficult to accept what's happened. And Felicia, 25, was on a long trip in Thailand. Last Sunday, she had a serious accident on the Thai paradise island of Koh Samui. And after a day with friends and her boyfriend, she was on her way home in the rain. And when she was going to cross the island on a moped, she got skidded and slid over onto the other side of the road. At the same time, another moped driver came from behind and tried to overtake Felicia as she crashed her moped. And during the overtaking, she received a violent blow to the head, a blow that caused a cerebral hemorrhage, swelling of the brain and fractures in both the back and head. And the mother was accompanied to Thailand by her son and Felicia's uncle Daniel. Now the family is fighting to bring Felicia home. And Daniel says uh, they've been in contact with SOS International, who say they can fly Felicia home as early as tomorrow or Thursday if everything looks good. But it can also take two weeks because they may need to have a surgical procedure. And the family does not know how much it may cost. Uh, Felicia's travel insurance had expired when the accident occurred. Her accident insurance does not cover the full hospital costs either. And really, I suppose this is the reason we're bringing this story to your attention, to be very careful about your insurance when you are visiting Thailand, especially if you're going to get onto a motorcycle or do anything, you know, slightly adventurous. And the flight alone will cost almost 2.5 million baht, and for each day Felicia receives around-the-clock intensive care approximately 165,000 Thai baht per day. So I don't want to harp on this, but if you are going to travel to Thailand, make sure you've got adequate health and travel insurance. Now, most people coming to Thailand go back home with lots of photos and great memories. But if you do end up in a hospital, it's going to cost you a lot of money. And you don't want to be one of these people who end up in the media who are not only in a lot of pain, and that transfers to their family and friends as well, uh, but also in a lot of financial difficulty. So do yourself a favour and make sure you're adequately covered and check the fine print, especially if you're going to be renting a motorcycle. 
Time for a bit of regional news now. And we go to straightstimes.com and this is a little bit unexpected out of India. India awaits top court's verdict on same-sex marriages. And India's top court will deliver a verdict on granting legal recognition to same-sex marriages today. And a bit further down there, only Taiwan and Nepal allow same-sex unions in Asia, where largely conservative values still dominate politics and society. It says, uh, if legal recognition is granted, the ruling will bring about significant changes in the country's largely conservative society Members of India's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and queer community say they face discrimination despite the 2018 judgment and that the absence of legal backing for same-sex marriages violates their constitutional rights. Of all countries looking to uh, accept same-sex marriage, I really would have thought India would have been way down on the list, but uh, Indian people are waiting today for an announcement from the High Court on that particular matter. And that's about it. Uh, Now, we look forward to your comments today. I know there'll be a flurry of commentary about the extension of the Russian visa waiver from 30 to 90 days. And uh, just be nice and keep to the topic. And I look forward to your comments today. Otherwise, thanks for joining in. Thanks to our sponsor, Five Star Marine. There's a link in the description below. A special deal for TNT viewers. And you can go to this website if you'd like to find out some of the places that they visit. So thank you, Five Star Marine. And thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.